So let's keep talking about vitamin C here. Yesterday we talked about emphasizing the right form, the right form that you want to use to actually be able to get a dose that is even effective or even serving you any purpose, at least from a protective prophylactic level and especially from a treatment level. So let's see what we could find. Let's see what we could do. You can see, you get it? Let's see, vitamin C, little vitamin C joke. Okay, all right. Um, what we want to do is realize how this vitamin C works. Again, now, once we understand how it works in different capacities, then it makes more sense to use it. And why is it effective? Why, does it, why has it been so effective and such an effective strategy in treating some of this, this COVID-19? Why has it been such a big thing that places like the Netherlands have donated 50 tons of vitamin C tablets over to Wuhan in order to try to, to attenuate some of the, the lethality of this thing right here? Everybody is seeing that vitamin C is a positive thing to add, so let's know how to use it. Let's understand how it works. First of all, from the major antiviral capacity, when they're taking these huge drips, if you're taking a huge amount of vitamin C, which is not recommended on a prophylactic and preventative level, not at all, at that level, when you're taking that much, 24 grams, 50 grams, 100 grams, it's more of a pro-oxidant, which is counterintuitive to what we usually think about. We usually think about antioxidants. A pro-oxidant is what it sounds. Pro-oxidation. It's causing oxidation, which is usually something we think as damaging. The reason that it's effective is the reason people use vitamin C drips as an adjunct sometimes, or a standalone, to cancer treatment. The cancer takes up that vitamin C. The cancer pulls in that vitamin C, and from the inside out, the vitamin C creates pro-oxidation, almost destroys it from inside out. There's speculation. No one knows the exact theory. They just know it's effective, but there's speculation in these high doses. It's doing the same thing to this virus. It's doing the same thing to this virus. It pulls in the vitamin C, causes a pro-oxidation state, and lets it out. But let's talk about why does vitamin C work for immune health for the majority of us without going to these extreme measures if we are put into that situation. Let's talk about taking it on the recommended prophylactic, potentially protective level. Why does vitamin C help? Well, one of the things, it boosts nitric oxide. We talked about nitric oxide a few days ago in a post about how exercise can boost nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is shown to inhibit viral replication. replication. There's check one. One of the worst things that can happen with this SARS-CoV-2 virus is the inflammatory storm or a cytokine storm you might have heard about before that can create and lead to something called ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. And that's what a lot of people succumb to in this one right here. That's a whole cascade that goes down that path. And it starts with something called an inflammasome called NLPR3. NLPR3. All you need to know about that, vitamin C helps to boost nitric oxide. Nitric oxide helps to block and suppress this NLPR3. Thus, we have an inroad to blocking potentially one of the paths that lead to this potentially lethal cytokine storm. Vitamin C. Why has it been around for so long? Why is it known to boost immune health? Well, it has to do with the white blood cells. The white blood cells need vitamin C and they carry vitamin C around with it. The white blood cells are your basic immune fighters to begin with. They rely on vitamin C to go. Vitamin C has been in the literature and again, it kind of loses steam over time um, and it kind of gets lost when you come up with some of these new immune boosting strategies. But vitamin C has been shown to be effective in treating viral pneumonia since the 70s.